Welcome everyone. We're going to talk about the November astrology and this video. I hope you enjoy it. Um, we will talk about what to expect, um, the important dates, and I'll have a homework assignment at the very end for those of you who stick around for that. Um, and hopefully that homework assignment is going to help us make the most out of the month ahead because we we have a wild ride ahead of us. I, I'm not going to make light of this. Uh, <laughs> November is going to be uh, wild, I believe. Um, and so if you want to see more videos like this, by the way, then make sure that you like this video. And um, especially if you get something good out of it, absolutely do that. Um, because all of the likes, shares, comments, and subscribes, as you know, help me reach more people here on YouTube. So let's get into the overview of this month. I mean, if we were to put it in a very, you know, small little nutshell, what, what is November going to look like? Well, I, I think there are some words that would sum it up, some themes, okay? Words like catharsis, <laughs> sex, intimacy, secrets. I think uh, we might see a lot of themes of power versus powerlessness, personal resources versus shared resources. You know, think about it also from a numerological standpoint, we are in the 10th month of this year and 10 is about endings, completions, culminations. And if you break 10 down, uh, it becomes one and one is a new beginning. So we're getting a lot of, um, you know, very Scorpio death, rebirth cycles, by the way, happy birthday to the Scorpios out there. Something that is very special and significant, in my opinion, about this month is that we come into November with Mars now in the very early stages of a two-year transit in Scorpio. This is big, okay? This is big. Um, it's been, Mars has been in Libra, and Libra has been very diplomatic and playing nicey-nice and people-pleasing and don't rock the boat is what we've seen for the last two years. Oh, no more of that. No more of that. Um, you know, Mars in Scorpio takes no prisoners. It's about to get ugly, folks. Uh, I, I don't mean to scare you. And another thing about this month, we are having the first of the Taurus and Scorpio eclipses over the next two years. So for the last two years, we've been dealing with a lot of uh, eclipses in Gemini and Sagittarius, which has had a lot to do with what you know versus what you believe, the local versus the long distance. Um, and it's switching now. We are now uh, getting beyond facts and knowledge and, you know, what people believe. All this almost, I don't want to call it mental energy, but, uh, you know, out of your head really is where we're moving into this zone of where's the value? Because Taurus and Scorpio is a lot about um, values, um, personal values, other people's values, shared values, shared resources, possessions. These, this is a lot about money. This is a lot about um, self-worth issue, issues. And my gosh, pay attention this month to any pain points that come up because it's really illuminating uh, what needs to be healed. Especially we've got some times this month that I'm going to talk to when we get into the important dates uh, where Chiron will be aspected and that is going to bring up opportunities for healing which in the heat of the moment might not feel too lovely right let's let's not lie or make light of this <laughs> probably gonna feel you know some pain points this month illuminating self-worth issues worthiness issues um, but the higher use of this all is looking at what what ties need to be severed what needs to be put to an end in your life um, what's viable, what's not, uh, what is going to empower you and move you forward and what clearly is not. Um, everything coming up this month, in my opinion, is moving us towards an increased awareness of what needs to get healed in our lives. And that's not always a pleasant experience. And particularly if you look at the Mars energy, the eclipses, it could get downright rude, all right? Like, I'm not going to make light of this, so buckle up. Okay, as far as what to expect this month in terms of love and relationships, 
I do believe that we are going to see a push towards uh, deep in intimacy and authenticity. Um, yet you might experience that through feeling like I, I really want a deeper connection with a person. And if it's not there, um, there could then be a push towards breaking free from that and mainly breaking free from limiting relationships, purging also um, people and situations from your life that are resisting regeneration. Um, maybe they are points of stagnation in your life and you realize you're at a crossroads. It's, it's either, you know, something's got to go. And if, if they're not going to move it forward, well, you're going to have to move on forward without them. So there could be some purging that occurs this month. Most definitely be aware of power plays, ego battles, uh, issues of exploitation, whatever nastiness gets revealed this month. Um, the higher purpose and plan for it is, uh, that, the things hidden in darkness are brought to light so that they can be healed, so that they can be purified. Now, and I'd say that's in terms of love and relationships, right? But in terms of career and money, this is a month where I think sober truths are uh, coming more and more to the forefront, right? I know for myself, um, I am seeing shortages in, at the grocery stores and um, there's just, and right now it seems really slight and insignificant, like, oh, well, they haven't had my tea bags for like two weeks now. Uh, not a huge ordeal, but, um, you know, and then I went to go, uh, have my daughter go get a supplement. Oh, they don't have that supplement. They're not carrying that. So I had to switch brands again, not a huge deal, but you're starting to see evidence here and there of food shortages. And, you know, it's been in the news since late September, all through October, um, issues with supply chain getting shut down, shipments being parked off in the ocean. Um, I know uh, Governor DeSantis out in Florida offered for those ships to come into the ports in Florida, and I'm a little bit out of the loop on where they're, we're currently at with that story um, because, I, you know, I got so... Uh, <laughs> sideswiped by that uh, full moon in Aries on the 20th of October that I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, disconnected from the current latest news on that. But I know, like, there are issues that are having to get reworked. And, you know, how, how much worse is this going to get before it gets better? I believe that, you know, over the last month or so, we were seeing reports or rumors but in November, it becomes more and more blatantly obvious that there is a problem here with the supply chain. There is a problem with uh, food shortages. And I am sorry to say, I think a lot of it is manufactured. I have long believed that scarcity is manufactured. And I believe that is definitely the case here as well. Um, I know currently there is some bickering going on in Congress about them trying to pass um, a, a bill that would make for higher taxes. There is some discussion of a global tax. Hello, this is global governance. We're in, entering into very scary times uh, where the concentration of power is becoming increasingly centralized in a global governance. You know, if you were to talk about this two, three years ago, definitely five, 10 years ago, people will call you a conspiracy theorist, a tinfoil hat wearer. Some of you were warned by friends and family who you call these names. Now we're seeing this is a very real issue um, that the world at large is losing its sovereignty. These nations are losing their sovereignty to global corporate uh, banking elite interests. And they're just doing this in the middle of the night, like the last selection we had, which I talked about when I went live <laughs> recently, you know, in 3 a.m. that, that Biden uh, selection uh, <laughs> curve, you know, the um, Viagra curve <laughs> on the chart in the middle of the night where they're bringing in all these uh, fake mail-in, you know what, um, 
and saying it's because of COVID. Well, now we got another COVID storyline that's getting rushed through. Oh, we got to rush this bill through. No, don't read it. Don't have time to read it. Let's just pass it through. What is it doing? Slaving human enslaving humanity further with increased taxation, increased regulations, all this rhetoric that is telling people, oh, this is to tax the rich when in reality, it is the poor who are being data tracked and monitored with $600 transactions, right? Like if you really cared about the billionaires here, don't go after $600 transactions, right? Um, go after hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of transactions, but no, 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 no. They're lying in your face, they're doing it in the middle of the night and they're acting, gaslighting you, acting like you're crazy if you say something's not adding up here, okay? You're telling me this is for the rich, but your bill tells me that you're tracking middle class and poor is what you're saying. So I, I don't know, I feel led to tell somebody watching here, ignore what they say, look at what they do, okay? Watch what they're doing, watch what they're doing. So. Um, Higher inflation, we all know about this. I've talked about this the last two months with my, you know, astrological videos that I put out for the month. Uh, it's going to continue. Uh, inflation, by the way, is hidden taxes. So, it, and, and taxation is uh, debt slavery. It is an infringement upon your individual liberty. It is economic warfare, right? It's not the pie in the sky, uh, paying your fair share bullshit that socialists are trying to tell you it is. It, it, it's about taking your individual liberty. Um, so we're going to see um, an increasing awareness of these things that I just mentioned with career and money matters, right? On the career track, mandates really in full swing where um, it's going to aggravate the food shortage issue even further. It's going to aggravate personal finances further, particularly with this lunar eclipse in Taurus. Holy crap, we are going to see the fallout um, uh, with unemployment. And um, and again, a lot of clever wordplay, people declaring that they're 100% uh, vaccinated for their employees, but how did they arrive at that number? They arrived at that number by eliminating, severing ties, whoo, Scorpio, all these eclipses, Mars and Scorpio severing ties with the people who are not moving this agenda forward. And it's there's a lot of this is how we see the play out of these power powerlessness dynamics going on. Um, in terms of investments, folks, there's no easy money right now. I mean, I know that people are saying there is there's always that. But the reality is that uh, over this month, if you're looking at investing, you need to be looking at what's going to happen over the long haul because we're going to see probably a lot of crazy, you know, and um, I think that the energy of the month, particularly with Venus and Capricorn, it is going to favor people taking a more reserved approach uh, with their personal finances. It is also, you know, with the eclipse in Taurus, you know, combined these energies are forcing us to really reckon within ourselves. Where have we been um, careless with our money? Um, how do we need to like become more conservative with our resources? The world at large, I think we're going to be seeing more pushback as the res uh, restrictions rise. And they will because they, they're pretty ballsy at this rate. They've gotten away with a lot and they have built the confidence over the last year and a half that they will be able to continue on this path and they'll be able to get even further. And so I'm sorry to say that the damage has already been done. You, you think of when the COVID restrictions first came into play about a year and a half ago and all the damage that has occurred, particularly to uh, small business owners and in terms of individual sovereignty worldwide. And so now what we're dealing with is individual liberties, our individuals are now in a quite weakened place, um, a vulnerable position, um, right? You, you got talked out of your personal power because you were gaslit by professional narcissists uh, who are running governments. Um, and they scared you into giving up your freedom. And, and now you're in so much bondage. How are you going to fight back? A lot of people have lost businesses. Now they're losing jobs with the mandates. And 
this is economic warfare. So when you're dealing uh, with people who have, unbeknownst to them, complied, willingly cooperated with their own disempowerment uh, by a corrupt government, um, humanity is in a quite a disempowered state right now. The good news is I do believe that um, the sleeping giants are awakening and a real fight is on and we are going to see it. And I do feel that um, resourcefulness is going to be our saving grace in all of this. Out of the darkness will arise opportunities for us to transmute the powerlessness at an individual level into more of an empowered state, God willing. Okay, so coming into this month, we have something very significant where uh, Mars entered into Scorpio on October 30th. Very significant because it has been in Libra for the last two years. And now we're going to be, you know, dealing with Mars and Scorpio over the next two years. Um, essentially, um, through November 2023. And so, you know... Mars and Libra was a bunch of nicey niceness, people pleasing. Oh, that's over with. Okay, the diplomacy, the well, if it makes you feel better, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Oh, no, <laughs> we're done with that. Okay, um, Mars in Scorpio is a take no prisoners vibe. Um, and so, you know, people are probably going to be attacking the problems head on. This is not taking a nice, sweet little diplomatic, like Mars does not really care uh, in Scorpio. It, it, it can be brutal. And so there will be themes of eliminating things to purify. And um, people will be executing projects. People will be uh, severing ties that need to be severed. And um, particularly if people feel like it is holding them back from moving forward in their life, that's what they're going to do. They're going to sever ties. Um, and so I want to encourage you um, not only to look at where Mars is currently transiting your chart this month, um, because it, well, it transits, um, if I remember correctly, it goes through the houses every, I think, two and a half months, okay? Uh, so, you know, it, it will change over the next two years what house it's transiting through. Um, but also important not just to look at where Mars is transiting, you know, what house is transiting this month and in the months ahead, uh, but it's important to also look at Aries, which rules is ruled by Mars. Where Where is Aries placed in your natal chart? Because that's gonna really give you a lot of clues about where in your life you need to undo, redo, or replan um, something in your life. So yeah, Mars and Aries, check that out in your chart. Um, now coming into the first of this month, we've got the Sun Quincunx Chiron. Uh, so right out the gate, we're already dealing with some self-worth stuff, um, soul wounds with Chiron. Um, and so very early on, confidence might be an issue. Self-confidence uh, might waver because of feelings of vulnerability and uh, feelings of maybe self-doubt, and that could bring about some indecision uh, and very much retard communications with people or the way that you're expressing yourself. Try to, um, if you can, to the best of your ability, uh, you know, be cognizant, be mindful of, of recognizing any kind of doubt or guilt feelings that come up in yourself and deal with them head on if you can. That's the best use of this energy if you want to really clear things up and move things forward in your life. On the same day as the first, Mercury and Libra um, will trine Jupiter and Aquarius, which is actually really good. So we have a layer of very expansive energy there that is good for socializing, brainstorming. Um, it's going to help, okay? It's going to help with communications. But like I said, just be aware of this self-doubt and these guilt feelings and lack of confidence and really work through it. On the second, Mercury is squaring Pluto and uh, the, this could result in very tense communications um, stemming from anxiety or feeling of, of internal pressure. 
beware of obsessive uh, mental energy, you know, um, or obsessing over trying to get other people to see your point of view or agree with you. And again, maybe that's coming from a place of uh, not feeling like you were not respected or you were kept out of the loop in some respect. Um, the the best advice I think during this time is to try to choose carefully. Um, you know, how, what direction do you want to go with this? It's, it's fine to be um, have a healthy dose of skepticism, but don't get off into this really dark zone of being suspicious, which is a very scorpionic type thing to do. Um, just try to be self-aware and mindful of any kind of obsessive thinking. Um, that people are hiding stuff from you, or they're keeping you in the dark about something, or they don't respect you or whatever, just, right. And some of that might be going on because there's, it's highly intuitive energy in uh, during Scorpio season. But again, uh, try to not let this get into a dark zone. Try to keep it constructive if possible. I think the best use of this energy is to really have in-depth conversations with people if you if you have concerns. Um, or suspicions, you know, um, have these conversations that hopefully encourage more vulnerability and authenticity. I mean, obviously, if you try to do that and this person's not opening up to you, well, yeah, red flag, they're hiding something, you know. But I will say with the moon and Libra on that particular day, it's really going to help boost your people skills and talking to people and working through these issues. Um, although by the next morning on the 3rd, yeah, um, you know, there might be some feeling that whatever you're doing in your life um, for pleasure or leisure is um, leaving, you know, you a little bit lackluster in terms of you getting what you desire. And there might be a desire for change. And if that's the case, you're going to really need to consider by the third, you know, what changes you need to make to bring more satisfaction into your life. Although I don't think it's going to be quite the right time to make any bold decisions about it, but definitely like thinking it through. Now on the fourth, we've got that new moon in Scorpio, and it is tightly opposing Uranus and square Saturn. I'm not looking forward to this, to be honest with you. Um, a very emotional energy, it, new, new moons or new beginnings. Um, so there will be an opportunity here, but with it opposing Uranus, it's like, do you go this way or that way? And with a square Saturn, there's some difficulty there, maybe karmic, uh, but there's definitely some kind of uh, restriction or limitation in terms of which direction you're going to go in with this new beginning. And so um, some of you are going to maybe need to ignore a wrong opportunity in your life that is keeping you stuck. Whereas others of you are realizing that you need to rise above some irrational, suspicious, suspicions and, and paranoia um, that is stopping you from going for the right opportunities in your life. Um, I myself have felt this energy of this, this being more, more aware recently of uh, what, what's right in my life in terms of relationships and maybe what is right is not what I would have thought in the past or it doesn't quite meet my idea of right, but um, you know, perhaps Perhaps only time and patience is going to reveal to you what is right. And I think, again, during this month, the, using your intuition is key and it's absolutely there. It's absolutely there with this new moon. So, um, you know, if this is concerning relationships, I think the right person, mm, they might involve a lot of work and come with uncertainty. But, you, you know, you have to ask yourself, is this worthwhile for me to take a new opportunity with this person? Um, other times, you know, you might realize, well, well, in some other instances, I should say you might realize it's better for you to miss an opportunity um, and hold out for something that is actually more viable over the long term. Um, but again, you're going to have to really consider your current needs. There could be a, like a lot of ego issues that come up around um, this new moon. Um, and those ego issues might bring about some feelings of, you know, rejection. Um, again, if somebody chooses, like, they're not going to go with that op opportunity because they don't think it's viable over the long term or they don't really think it's a worthwhile investment, 
and they decide to hold out, well, then somebody feels rejected over it or careful that you're not um, rejecting something you should simply because you, you have your own issues with the rejection and you don't want to put that on to somebody else. So um, there is going to be a need during this time to, um, you know, get above all these ego issues and um, also be aware of abuse in people that is rooted in unhealed self-worth issues or even allowing yourself to be abused by people because you don't want to hurt their feelings or make them feel rejected or whatever you know um this is really going to be a time to look at what are your current limitations uh, with a full moon is there a current opportunity or person that is giving you an opportunity to improve your life and the limitations and restrictions that you've been dealing with or are you better off without them? Is this an opportunity that is going to make you feel stuck over the long term? Are you going to be with this person hoping and wishing for change? And waiting? I think the best advice with this new moon is try to join forces, forces with people who are on solid. Uh, they have a solid sense of ego and self-worth. And they're imparting that to you and they want to bring that to you. They want you to have that as well. Moving on to the fifth, we've got Venus and Capricorn. So uh, this is bringing about, you know, very mature, sober, um, some might even say cold, um, but very practical, down to earth, um, common sense approach to matters of love and money, anything that nourishes mind, body and soul. Um, it, it makes for things, you know, kind of being really stable in terms of what what we're nourishing in our lives and how we're doing that. But there can also be some reservation and, you know, a sense of reserve and holding back and caution and being conservative. So um, this will be a good time to analyze long term investments, not get rich quick nonsense. Um, pay attention also to what's happening during this transit because um, you will probably revisit this in your mind when we get into um, December 19th into 2022 when Venus goes retrograde in Capricorn um, will be brought back to this time frame and it will be something that we're revising reviewing now, on that same day of Venus going Capricorn on the 5th, we've got Mercury and Scorpio as well. So be very careful with um, secrets and prying eyes. Um, pay attention, like I said, to your intuition. Uh, on the 10th, Mars square Saturn. That's something about the way that you're trying to assert yourself in Scorpio. Um, there's some level of difficulty here. You're getting some kind of pushback, restriction, uh, there might be a karmic lesson tied to it. It might be coming from the authorities. Um, but, right, Mars is really trying to um, take care of business, you know, um, kick ass and not take names. Uh, but there's quite a fight here with Saturn uh, squaring it. And we see that again on the 17th when Mars opposes Uranus. So really... Um, difficult aspects here that Mars is enduring in terms of how are you asserting yourself and this assertion with Mars can have to do with matters behind closed doors like your sexuality or it can ha have to do with you know what's going on out there you know how you are asserting yourself out in the public world um, also on the 17th we've got Venus entering pre retrograde shadow so I'm already feeling it I am already feeling um, being brought back down memory lane um, to issues uh, maybe past loves you're thinking of past loves um, probably going to get a lot of people want to get readings on and I, it usually happens with Venus retrograde are they coming back are they thinking of me should I try to ret uh, reconcile um, we're already, our minds are already going in that direction. Um, I do readings like that, by the way, but, um, I want to say that, uh, I also have a video on here for those of you who are interested. Should I, I think it's titled, should I reconcile with my ex during a retrograde? So I will put it at the end of this video for those who are interested. 
On the 19th, we've got the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus, squaring Jupiter, not a picnic. Um, you know, eclipses are energies that impact us over the next six months. They're big. And in Taurus, this is about self-worth issues, values, possessions, personal income. Squaring Jupiter, there's some kind of difficulty here. There's some kind of challenge in terms of how are you getting expansion with these money matters, with these values that maybe are being eclipsed out of your life, maybe a job, God forbid, a source of income. And so, uh, by the way, this is the first set of many Scorpio Taurus eclipses to come. Um, now through October 2023, and so there are issues of self-worth and worthiness that are being brought up, as I said before, really pushing us to examine issues within ourselves about maybe self-indulgence, overindulgence, um, maximalism versus minimalism, um, stubborn, stuck energies with, you know, personal finances. Like if you have been up against the wall financially since COVID or for whatever reason, um, you're going to have to really think, how am I going to expand upon this? Because I'm telling you around the 19th, it's going to bring it up. On the 21st, Sun and Sagittarius, I think this is the beginning of things lightening up for us a little bit. Now, you know, that's only going to go so far, right? Because next month we've got another eclipse. Um, it will be solar, though that's that's positive, something being eclipsed into your life. Um, but we're still dealing with all this Mars energy uh, in, in Scorpio next month, and we're still dealing with, you know, these eclipses unfolding over the next two years having to do with money values worth you know so things start lifting on the 21st with the sun in sagittarius i think things are going to become more optimistic people are going to be more willing to adapt maybe having more fun things are being being more i don't know revitalized at that time and that's perfect timing because we're going to come into thanksgiving around then at least in the united states and then mercury moves into sagittarius on the 24th so our mindsets even turn um, more optimistic, more philosophical. If it gets deep at all, it's philosophical with a Mercury and Sagittarius. So less of this probing that we had earlier in the month and less intense than Mercury and Scorpio that we had earlier in the month. So yeah, people are probably still bold and opinionated, but maybe um, it's coming from more of this place of being intellectually challenging um, and more playful energy than what we saw earlier in the month with Mercury and Scorpio. Then on the 26th, Saturn and Aquarius is going to sextile Chiron and Aries. This is the last of these three and you know that have occurred this year. And so this is again an energy where Chiron is in Aries is getting triggered. And I told you from the very right out the gate, the first of this month, we had an aspect of Chiron uh, getting triggered on the first, yeah, with the Sun Quincunx to Chiron, all right? So here we go again towards the end of the month with Chiron again. Um, you know, sextile is a nice aspect. Um, and in some way though, we're, we're having to look at um, these self-worth issues and how it fits into the bigger scheme of the collective and the restrictions that the collective have been under. Uh, since Saturn first entered Aquarius, which was, oh, about, I don't know, a year ago. So, and we got another year and a half to go, if I recall correctly, so. And then on the 28th, Mercury conjunct the Sun in Sagittarius. Nice energy, lovely energy, I think, for communications and thinking on more of a positive note. On the 30th, Neptune is going direct, finally, in Pisces and sextile Venus. So overall, I think it lends itself to more of a dreamy energy and more of a positive, optimistic energy uh, at the end of this month. I think overall, I mean, it's going to start out, you know, kind of just be gentle with yourself, okay? I see that it's going to lighten up the uh, last week. Uh, things are going to get lighter and more positive the, the last week, week and a half of November but buckle up. I, I do think there's a lot of heaviness the first three weeks of this month. And um, some holy shifts are occurring, not just in this month, but the month ahead. 
Uh, but it looks like we will we will be able to catch our breath the last week, week and a half. So I hope that helps. So I want to say the homework assignment for this month to help you make the most out of it is uh, if you're able to help somebody that is in need of help right now, please do so. Like if you see somebody took a stand uh, against the mandates and now they're out of a job, um, please, you know, help them with these financial setbacks. And again, I, like I said before, we've got to be resourceful. Think outside of the box. If you're like, you know what? I don't really have any money to help them. Well, then think of what you do have instead of thinking, well, I can't, because I feel like a lot of people are in this mindset of what they can't do. They can't do what, no, what can you do? Uh, do you know somebody who maybe can um, provide a, a work opportunity where they are free from the mandates? Uh, do you know somebody who can maybe uh, provide, I don't know, what kind of resources that they're in need of something? Uh, try to see what you can do is really my point. Um, also, this is going to be a good month to really ally yourself, network yourself with people who have fortified their own self-worth and their own personal financial worth and, you know, really aim to do the same for yourself this month. And then finally, in your quiet times of praying and meditating, um, consider how you can empower yourself better. Um, while empowering others. Try to eliminate and sever ties as much as possible with people and situations that are disempowering to you. And that's all I have for now. So thanks for watching. If you like this, um, I hope that you subscribed and you hit the bell for notifications so that you see what I have coming out next. Till next time, be blessed.